heard that opening an RSP, you can withdraw it tax free. I also heard that if you have a business, you can pay very little taxes. I also heard that opening an RRSP is so much more important than a tax-free savings account. If you have any of these questions on your mind, you definitely want to check out today's video. Hey everyone, as requested by you, I'm gonna reveal the top tax hacks and strategies that I found so far. So if you are an active real estate investor or stock investor or both, or you're a small business owner or you're incorporated, or you're just a Canadian who loves saving and investing to grow multiple streams of income, then you better watch this video because it's jam packed with valuable content of tax strategies and tax hacks for Canadians. So number one, top tax tips for Canadians who love to save and invest. So without further ado, I want to talk about all the amazing tax saving accounts that we have in Canada. I think if you love to save and invest, you must, must open these accounts. The first one is a TFSA. It is a tax-free savings account that is available to all Canadians. Now the contribution limit to the TFSA is 6,000 this year. And if you have never contributed to your TFSA, you get up to $75,500 of contribution room because it can be backdated. So the beauty of the TFSA is that you could contribute money into it and then use that to invest in stocks, in dividend stocks, in US growth stocks. Basically, you can use it to invest, to grow your money tax-free. And most importantly, there are no limits to how little or how big you can withdraw. Of course, it can't. You can't withdraw more than what you have in your TFSA. The next one is maximize our ESPs because tuition costs are just getting so, so expensive. If you have kids or you have a nephew or you have a niece, and you have extra moolah, please dump that money into a registered education savings plan, which is essentially a savings plan that you could grow your investments tax-free for your kids to pay for their tuition costs. And every year, the government actually pays you a bit of moolah every single year. And there's a contribution limit of $2,500 per year, and the government will give you extra $500 just like that. And when you invest in the RESP into dividend growth stocks or stocks or some type of asset, like even crypto, like Bitcoin ETFs, that asset can grow for like 18 years. And then by the eighth time your kid turns 18 or shortly after and decides to go to university, they can withdraw that amount and it only gets taxed at your kids or your nephew, your nieces, a tax rate, which could be like zero because they're poor. The next account is the registered retirement savings plan. The government allows you to open this account. And as long as you're working, you can contribute around 18% of your income into an RSP. And then when you do that, you can actually get a tax deduction every single year. Now, the point of this account is to save for retirement, but there's multi-use for this account. There are two good reasons why you should open an RRSP. Now, the most obvious reason is you're using it for retirement. So when you turn 65, you retire, you can withdraw the money, you get taxed at a lower tax bracket than if you were working today and making like a 80 to 100 grand income. The second way is that you can use your RRSPs to actually go buy your first home. It's called the home buyer's plan. This is something that I've done. I purposely dumped as much money as I can to my RRSP, which actually in hindsight wasn't a lot, but to me it was a lot. And it took me four years, but then when I saved up enough for my RRSP, I withdrew the money and then went and bought my first condo. Now the downside to this is that when you withdraw money from your RRSP, uh, you do have to repay it over next 10 years. Now the second cool way to use your RSP, even if you're not thinking of using it for retirement, is the lifelong learning plan. Maybe you've always wanted to do your master's program or you want to go do a trades. Well, you can re withdraw the money from your RSP as a, as, as a way to pay your tuition costs, which is exactly what I did really early in my life, but I never finished my degree. But that's that's besides the point. The point is you can withdraw your money to offset university costs if you plan to go back to school. So the downside to this is that there's a maximum to what you can withdraw for your lifelong learning plan and you have to pay it back over a 10 year period. But the cool thing is if you dump money to your RRSP into assets and it grows and then you decide later to withdraw it and use it to buy your first home or to pay for education costs, that's actually like a tax-free loan, which is like pretty amazing. This is why I really advocate everyone should open an RSP, especially if you're planning to go back to school, if you're planning to buy a first home, or you're planning to retire early. This RSP is not 
just for retirement at 65 years old. And the beauty of this is that you can actually contribute, over contribute by up to $2,000 every single year. And that $2,000 can grow tax-free in the account for years and years and years. Even though there is a contribution limit, which is only 18% of your income, you can actually over contribute by two grand, up to two grand. Another tax hack, and this one I love because it's about giving away your money to charities. Did you know if you donate money to charities in Canada, there's amazing tax deductions. For example, I found this Red Cross calculator. If I donate $1,000, I get $361 like back, okay, which as a tax deduction, which is like amazing. So that means I actually didn't spend the full thousand dollars because the $361 as a tax deduction. So please, if you're looking to donate money to charities, just know that in Canada, we have so many awesome tax benefits when you donate to charities. Another tax hack. Okay, this is, I think, only on Ontario. But if you donate money to a political campaign, there's huge tax deductions. Now, the credit provides a maximum of $1,384 if you donated over $3,149 in the tax year to a political campaign in Ontario. Now, if you donated less, well, there's a progressive tax rate and uh, you get less of a credit back. So it gets really complicated. I'll just point to where you can find this resource in the links below in the video description. Here are tax tips for Canadians who have retired early or who want to retire early. Now the RRSP is great if you're retired early or you just plan to take a break, a sabbatical, take some time off. And if you have some funds in your RSP and you're not collecting a pension right now and you're actually going to be in your lowest income tax year, this might be a great, great opportunity to start withdrawing from your RRSP because you're in a lower income tax bracket. So essentially you can pay very little taxes if you withdraw the funds from your RRSP. A second cool strategy is if you were an awesome saver and investor, and you grew your dividends in say a non-registered account or even in a registered account, did you know you can collect up to $50,000 of dividend income tax free, okay? Because it's considered a dividend tax credit. Canada has this amazing dividend tax credit if you invest in Canadian dividend growth stocks or Canadian companies and they pay out dividends, we can collect that up to $50,000 tax free, which is like amazing. Now the caveat to this is of course, I said you need to retire early or you just be in a state where you don't have any pension. You don't have any active income. That's how you can get up to $50,000 tax free, which I think is amazing tax strategy. And if that's not enough, then you can still withdraw a little bit money from your TFSA. You can start withdrawing a little bit money from your RRSP. Just be mindful of the uh, Canadian tax bracket so that you can really, really minimize your taxes. And there's here's the dividend tax bracket sheet here. You'll look at it and you could download in the links below. Here's another cool strategy. If you're retired early and you got no pension, but your partner is going to collect a pension. Well, did you know that your partner can split their pension with you when he or she retires? So that means you can actually withdraw your RSPs right now, deplete your TFSAs up until the point when your partner actually collects a pension. So basically you'll have no other income, maybe some dividend tax credit income, but the cool thing is that you're still in a pretty low income tax bracket. And if your partner has this big fat pension, well, you can split that pension. So basically divvy the taxes between the both of you, rather than just having all the taxes to your partner, well, you split the pension, bonus, you get extra money, and you get to help reduce your taxes. Another cool strategy is getting tax-free loans. Okay, so the way you do this is if you have rental properties or you have a home that's built up a ton of equity, so your home's worth a million dollars and your mortgage is like super, super tiny, like a hundred grand, well, you built up a ton of equity that you can actually get a loan against your home or against your rental property. Of course, you need to have a pretty good broker to do that. If you need a broker to actually get, get equity out of your property to buy more rental properties or to buy investments, then you I highly recommend Streetwise Mortgages. Okay, go check out the link below to get your free financing consultation to help you buy multiple rental properties or to use it as an investment loan. So why say as an investment loan? Okay, a rental property is an investment, stocks are investments. The point is that you can draw the equity tax-free and then use it to go buy some, some assets like a rental property. And when you do that, you can actually get this loan written off. So the interest payments that you pay could be written off every single year, as long as it's used for investment purposes. Another way to get a tax-free loan, well, if your account has grown massively, 
Maybe you bought a ton of Tesla stocks. Maybe you own a lot of Shopify stocks for a long time, like Amazon, Google, Apple, maybe you've owned those for the last five to 10 years. Well, I'm pretty sure your account has grown pretty big. And if so, you can actually get a loan tax-free against the stocks as collateral. Now there's some uh, brokerages will allow you with low interest rates like Interactive Broker, I think is a, like the benchmark is like uh, Canada's prime rate plus like 0.25. Don't quote me on this. I'm, I've never, I've actually never done this, but I know people have done this where you can get a really, really low interest rate loan against your stocks. So meaning you don't actually have to sell your stocks to actually use this loan. That's why I say it's tax free, but I would put a huge caveat to this. Please don't go use it to buy that boat or buy that motorcycle that you've always wanted. I really advocate if you use a loan, please use it for investment purposes because then you can also write off some of that interest payments. Here's some tax strategies or tax tips for business owners like real estate investors or well, if you're, if you're incorporated or thinking of being incorporated. The first one is, well, maybe you manage your own set of rental properties and maybe your kids are getting a little bit older. Well, did you know you could pay your kids to go like mow the lawn, uh, file, do some bookkeeping, basically do some of the grunt work uh, with the rental properties. And then that money you give to your kids could be, would be taxed at their tax bracket, which is like, really, really low, which is probably essentially zero. And that means because you get every year in Canada, there's up to like, I think 13 grand ish, don't quote me on this, where it is basically you get this tax free. Okay, so your kids could be earning income and earning this income tax free. Here's another tax strategy. Maybe you actually earn more than $36,000 of extra income, like as a side hustle. Maybe you freelance on the side. Maybe you sell products on Amazon. Maybe you're like a consultant like me for the last six years working for government clients as an independent consultant. Well, you might want to consider incorporating. Here's why. Did you know in Ontario, the tax rate for corporations, as long as you're a small business, meaning you're earning less than $500,000 of revenue, you get taxed at 13.5%. Yes. 13.5%. Now here's the big caveat. Now the caveat is you're a great saver, meaning you don't use all the money and withdraw the profits from your company. Then you may want to consider having a corporation because you can write off a lot of business deductions like your computers, your office expenses, marketing expenses. There's so many write-offs. And then you get taxed super awesome at 13.5%. But of course, of course, as long as you don't withdraw all the profits from your company. This is when it's worthwhile. So the minimum I think income you'd want is at least $36,000. Then you may consider incorporating because you get massive tax benefits. Now, another cool strategy is if you're incorporated and you're expecting you could be hit with a massive capital gains because you own rental properties, you own tons of stocks, gained a massive wealth over the years. Well, if you're planning to transfer that to your kids, well, you know one thing is guaranteed and that is death and taxes are also guaranteed. So when you die, Taxes are guaranteed, so a way to offset this is have insurance, whole life insurance, and then what it does is that when you die, then that insurance pays out and it's tax-free. And you can use your corporation to actually pay for that insurance, which is a great benefit, especially if you're paying very low income taxes because you have the small business deduction. Hey everyone, question for you. I was thinking of doing a video called, I wanna just look at my notes, tax tips for Canadians who want to transfer wealth to their kids or loved ones. Okay, so what are the tax tips for transferring wealth to, well, future generations? Do you want to see this video? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I hope you found this video so helpful. These are some of the tax strategies and tax hacks I've learned over the years and research. And I hope that, well, you got some things that you can use right now. And also goes without saying, I am not an accountant. So all this is for entertainment purposes only. So if you plan to do some tax planning or transferring your wealth and assets, be sure to talk to a certified legal advisor. Get good tax advice because it's well, well worth it.